they earned the win, you know, and, and um, proud of our boys and, and their fight, uh, their effort. And uh, things just didn't go our way tonight. You know, I, I'm, I'm proud of the effort, our guys. And then, um, you know, we, we but I, I don't want to take anything away from Coastal Carolina. They made plays and, and uh, they made more than we did. So they earned the win. But I'll take any questions you guys have. <clears throat> Right. Thanks. Uh, just a reminder to use the hand raise function if you'd like to ask a question. And we'll get started with Jared Lloyd and then Norma Gonzalez. Kalani, Coastal Carolina running that spread option. The defense seemed to have a tough time making the right reads. How hard was it for them? Just, you know, short prep we, against that type of offense. Yeah, it was difficult. I mean, there's the, it's, it's, it's just like the option, but in the, in the gun, you know, and, and uh, a lot of downhill plays and, um, you know, we, we were able to get some stops here and there, but for the most part, they, we couldn't get them behind the chains. They, they were getting a lot of yards on first down and, and, uh, we didn't do enough to, to stop the run. So, uh, th there's things that, that I need to do better as a coach and to get them ready and, and, and make sure that we, uh, you know, that we're, we're prepped and ready to play this game. But, uh, again, I, I don't want to take anything away from Coastal Carolina. They made plays. They, 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 uh, had a system and, and, you know, they, it, it worked and, and we didn't do enough. To, to stop them. Hey, Coach, it seemed like Sack wasn't quite finding his groove until later in the game. Could you maybe talk about um, utilizing more of the ground game rather than the air game and just sort of went on with him? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know all the details. I know that we, you know, um, well, their, their style of offense, they, they possess the ball and, and they limit your your um, your, your drives. They, they limit your possessions. So, um uh, I don't know whether it's a rhythm or whatever it was, but it, it, it just didn't look like our, what our, our normal offense can do. And as a team, we, you know, we, we need to play complimentary football on, on, on all three phases. And, uh, you know, they, they just made more plays tonight. And then obviously they made one more and we're a few inches short of, of, of winning the game. Right, let's take a question from Jay Drew, Christopher Heidel, and Kyle Bonagora. Yeah, Kalani, were you kind of surprised at just how you weren't able to dominate the line of scrimmage like you have done in the past and what like a lot of so-called experts thought you could do tonight? Yeah, I mean, you're looking at the line of scrimmage and I, I had to go back and watch the film, but I, I think that, um, you know, they, we probably we gave up too many yards and I would say first down was the biggest issue and uh, whether it's, uh, you know, missed assignments or scheme, whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the film and look at it. I had to look at it a little bit more detailed and, we made some adjustments. Felt like we had, uh, we had enough to, um, you know, to once we were getting in in, in, a, in a position where we had the right people on the right scheme going, uh, we just ran out of time and, and ran out of options for our, for our offense to, have, to possess the ball. I, uh, but I, I, do, I think to get to answer your question better, Jay, I, I think look at the film a little bit more closely. Hey, coach, it's Chris Seidel from Hermitson Radio in Baltimore. Um, just talk about this whirlwind, you guys. This time last week, you, you played a game, and then you're looking for a game. Just, uh, just talk about how did you guys get this game together, and uh, how you prep somebody in 48 hours, almost. Well, I mean, you know, I, I think that the, the game happened, and we were we were excited to play, and and uh, it's a little bit unique than than other weeks, but it's okay. We were ready to play, and and, and looking forward to the to the to the matchup, and uh, we had the same amount of time that. Coastal Carolina had so you know and when it came down to it guys they're a good team <laughs> and, and and they're they're undefeated for a reason you know what I mean and I don't want to sit here and take away from them because they actually they executed did well and they they are in a position for them to be in the game and to, to win it and 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 uh you know we had to come from behind and, and and come up with a long drive and we're back you know backed up with with not a lot of time left and uh, but they made the plays and and so I I, I want to make sure that everybody understands Coastal Carolina is a really good team and they showed it tonight, and, and, and uh, you know they they out they outplayed us, and they got the win. We, we didn't, weren't able to do it. Kyle, did you have a question? Hey, Kalani, how do you think this impacts your team's ability to get a, into a New Year's Six bowl? Yeah, all I know is we have San Diego State next week, and we and that's our senior game. You know, um, it's the last game at home. Uh, you know, our guys are hurting right now, but they'll, they'll respond back. We, we have a bunch of tough kids that, that love the game of football and um, things that go our way tonight. We didn't get the win, but I'll, I'm going to 
how they react to this to this game is going to be really important. And and we have an opportunity to play against a really good San Diego State team next week, and 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 uh, you know send seniors out with a win. And uh, that's what our focus is going to be on. And and you know we played against San Diego State last year, and so and didn't get didn't get the outcome that we wanted. And so this is an opportunity for us to get back to work. The the one thing we do know is that that our players are tough kids that want to they love football and they want to work and. And I'm looking forward to, to, you know, learning from this game and, and improving and, and making sure that we uh, can be at our best next week against San Diego State. All right, let's take a question for Mitch Harper, uh, Jake Hatch, and Sean Walker. Kalani, late in the fourth quarter on that fourth and five with about five minutes to go, was there a consideration to, to go for it or was the thought to, get, to punt it all along? Yeah, you know, we thought about possibly doing it and going for it there, but um, you know, just just we felt like we were in a good situation with our defense at that point, where we felt like we can have have you know, getting used to the speed of, of their offense was just different, you know, and and so uh, we felt like we were starting to get get a better grip on it, and um, felt like our defense could get us out uh, of a jam, and we knew we were down, we had only one timeout, and so uh, we knew that we wouldn't be able to give up a lot of first downs. And, you know, looking at it, we just, I mean, Corbeck made a great play on the first uh, time he got first down. He just made a, a, one of our guys miss and uh, got a first down. And, and, you know, fortunately, we were able to get the, the, the ball back with it, um, under a minute. And, um, and then we know our offense can, can be explosive. And uh, just, you know, I'm just glad that we had a chance to win at the end, you know, and, and, and that our defense stepped up and got the stop. And uh, we just need to be in a p- better position to, to win next week and, and make sure that we have a, you know, a better lineup for for what we want to, what, how we can play. I know we can play better than that. Kalani, when it came to the timeout situation, you found yourself in late in that game. What was the thinking on calling it, especially that timeout ahead of that punt? Um, you mean on our our, our second timeout in the, in the second first, timeout? Second correct. Time? Yes. Yeah, um, we just didn't know we had the right lineup. And then uh, we, we there's a possibility of having 12 guys on the field at one moment and didn't want a, a penalty. And so we had to take a timeout to get, um, you know, we were trying to get a, a, a possible block on there. And uh, I, I felt like we we're going to run out of time and didn't want a penalty of 12 men on the field. Sean Walker, did you have a question? Yeah, coach, you you kind of touched on it there a little bit, but with with everything that that happened, everything that kind of went down for you guys, um, you're at the end of the day, you're still one yard out on that final play, that kind of hail mary like that. Just what were your emotions like? I guess watching that, and can you kind of kind of walk us through sort of that play and how it developed and 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 everything in there? Well, I think the play before it was the key that we were able to get the, the ball closer. Um, and then to Dax, you know, I mean, with three seconds left, and and then we had a setup, you know, for the play, and and, and um, just didn't. You know, there's a chance that we could have got got it in. I mean, we would like to have that in the end zone, but I think they're playing a, a certain defense to, to basically play play the goal line, and uh, you know, we thought that that would be a good play, and it just didn't work out. They made they made a great stop, and so um, you know, credit to to, to Coastal Carolina, they they deserve to win, and it was, I mean, didn't go our way. You know, but uh, like I said, the guys played hard. Their effort was there, and uh, they're looking forward to, to bouncing back and getting getting a better performance next week. All right, quick follow up from Eric Lloyd, Norma Gonzalez, and Jade Root. Kalani, you talked about the guys playing hard, but they didn't look as crisp as we've seen them. Did you see that through the game? I mean, it just didn't seem quite as, uh, you know, maybe on top of things and making the assignment reads like they, they have been. Did you see the same thing? Um, you know, I, I probably have to look at the film a little bit more, but I, I, I thought there's a couple of things. One is that Coastal Carolina put themselves in a good position to, to make plays. And then, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I, I feel it's a, it's a disrespectful thing to say, oh, we just made too many mistakes and all that which means that, that they didn't earn the win. Um, they did everything they could to, to earn the win, and, and uh, maybe we didn't play as clean as we could have, but I think you have to kind of look at that. Was it what they did or was it, um, you know, our, our mental errors? And so that's one, one thing that we have to look at and communicate with our guys and, and evaluate in the next little bit and, and try to improve on this. So that's, that's the key. I, I just want to make sure that I don't take away from 
or discredit what Coast Carolina has done. They're, they're a really good team. They're, that's why they've locked up the, their division, you know, and they're going to play for their uh, league championship in, in a, a week or two. I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on, but, you know, that and they'll be in a good place to, I mean, to, to win their league. So uh, we knew that it was going to be a, a tough matchup coming here, and we're excited to be here. You know, we're, we're thankful for the game and uh, just didn't get the result that we wanted. There was a lot of chippiness throughout the game, a lot of banter, scrums, little fights. What do you have to say about the, the way your team was able to sort of battle through that and handle that, that different adversity? Yeah, I think it was just that, the, you know, at the end of the first half was a, a, a lot of, there were a lot of issues. I think it was just a, a lot of miscommunication. I mean, we felt like that, the, you know, when you're looking at it, that the quarterback was um, getting targeted and, and maybe it was been a little roughed up, but, um, you know, the ref told me that it was clean. And so I had nothing to say. It's just that, you know, we had to get our guys out and get to the halftime. And, you know, I, I have to credit both teams after things, after we went to halftime, came back. And I, and I talked to, to James Chadwell after, and, and it was, it's not a, it's not a good representation of how both teams really play, you know, and, and, um, but I, I like the way our guys were able to get, gain their composure and come back and play a clean second half. And I, it was just that one moment right before the half off of the interception that was the biggest deal. And, and, and you know, we'll, we'll have to look at it and, and try to get better. But like I said, uh, I, I think the, the things happen when you have two undefeated teams that are battling and emotions are high. You know what I mean? But uh, there's nothing that was uh, that was uh, deliberate, as, as in my opinion, it was deliberate or cheap or anything from both sides. All right, we'll take a last question from Jay Drew. Yeah, Kalani, uh, I was going to ask you about the halftime thing, so uh, um, you already answered it. But um, where do you kind of, what do you tell the guys in the locker room after? What was your message and kind of where do you go from here? Yeah, I just told them I'm proud of them. I love being their coach and and, uh, and that, you know, the, the things that they've, do, they've done, the, the way that they react to this is going to, really de determine a lot of big things for them in their future. And so uh, just talked about how I love them, you know, and, and, and they're going to have to lean on each other and, and we're going to have to really regroup as a group, as a team and, and, and believe in each other more. And, um, you yeah, know, there's no finger pointing or anything like that. We, we, we got to go back to work. It's a eternal principle that we believe in. So let's we'll go back to work and try to find ways to improve and, and be at our best next week. Um, we do have, uh, you know, a game next week and then, and, and, possible uh, bowl game so we we feel like we have two more opportunities to play together as a group and that's that's the focus is, is to make sure that we enjoy as much of, of it as we can and and we were going to respect the game you know that I keep saying it over guys the, the result didn't go our way but it was a good game it was a, it was exciting for the fans and and uh, I give credit to Coastal Carolina for, for getting the win and but our, our guys will be back and they'll, they'll 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 respond the right way I believe in them and uh and and yeah, it's an honor for me to coach him. We'll continue with the Cougar Locker Room Show and get a quick comment or two from head coach Kalani Sitaki, who is standing by right now. Coach Sitaki from the Cougar Locker Room area, thanks for coming on and uh, spending a little bit of time with us here. It's, uh, again, tough for a real deep reflection just so soon after the game. Um, and credit, full credit to Coastal. That's a top 20 team uh, and a top 15 team in the AP and coaches for a lot of good reasons. They played you well tonight and, and had a good game plan. They did, and, and you, you probably heard me in the post game, but... You know, I, I don't want to take anything away from them. and um, But, you know, we're going to re respond from this and get better. And uh, just proud of our boys. You know, they played hard and, and, and um, just didn't get the result that we wanted. But um, I'm proud of their effort. If there was uh, one thing you could change about tonight's game, uh, what might it be off the top? Uh, I I don't know. I might, I might have to probably go back and look at, at the film and, uh, and, and see for myself. But I, I feel like... Um, you know, I, I don't want to take anything away from Coastal Carolina, but but I felt like uh, we we weren't in in sync in a lot of different ways, not not just offense or defense. Is is all three phases, you know, and and uh, that's my job as a head coach, and and I'll, I'll try to get it better and, and get these guys in a better position to have success next week. We'll continue with Kalani after this. We're taking a break. BYU falls to Coastal Carolina, 22 to 17 on the new skin BYU Sports Network. <laughs> This is the Cougar Locker Room Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.
Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Coastal Carolina 22 and BYU 17, today's final score. Coastal Carolina, one of those teams that they can uh, they can really grind you out, Kalani. As we're joined by the head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Sitake. They possessed the ball for 38 minutes, and BYU had it for 22. So while you had a good yards per play going, you probably didn't snap enough plays tonight. Yeah, and I, I don't know exactly how many plays we had on offense. But, 58. Uh, how many did we play on defense, do you know? 69. Yeah, it's probably a little bit too much, and, and that's you know our fault. we got to get out of, out of drives and um, make, make things even more difficult. I, I know that they possessed the ball, and they tried to limit uh, our opportunities to, to even have be on the field as an offense, but when we do, we've had teams do that before, and we've been able to capitalize on it and make plays, and and uh, you know they just made more plays than we did. We came up a yard short, you know, and, and uh, um, with everything that was said and done after this game, um, I, I, I can still build on on the fact that these guys don't quit. Our players believe in each other, believe in our system, and uh, you know we, we feel like we have a good thing going. So we just got to keep building on it, and uh, and I got to I got to find ways as a head coach to, to get these guys so that they're playing at their best all the time, and and uh, looking forward to getting that done next week. Yeah, Coach, how do you balance as a coach the two aspects? There's the physical, actual, like, technical, right? Like how a guy moves his body, the technique he plays, and things like that. And then there's the, the mental approach. C- coming out of a game like this, how do you balance the two uh, areas for improvement or, or, or the, the coaching points between the two? Well, I, I just believe in getting better, you know. And, and so the result didn't go our way. But the one thing that we can't have is, is – um, making every little thing um, the reason why we lost, yeah. you know. and, and Mountains and out of molehills, Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. And so, and, and, and you guys heard me say that when we were winning, you know. And so um, the, the goal goes back to getting better, and regardless of the result, um, we have to, uh, uh, you know, assess what's the most important thing to fix and how can we fix it and, and, and not just try to blame people. Just because it didn't go our way, you, you can't blame somebody. I mean, Tyler Algier, Algier feels bad for, the, you know, that fumble. And I told him, "Hey, listen, you got to keep playing ball, man. That, that's that's it happens. And obviously, we we got to do whatever we can to, to make sure that you know we ensure better ball security. But it wasn't because of a lack of trying or effort or um, didn't lose lose focus. You know, it's just it was one of those things that I think it's just hard about this game. And and uh, I, I just love that kid and love our players. And then we got to keep building on the fact that they they believe in this team and they they love what they represent." Yeah, Coach, I love what you said about, you know, we just said 58 offensive plays, 68 for them, throwing another 30 plays. That puts you somewhere around 140, 150 plays. And each one, that's what's so great but also so maddening about football is each one of those has a small effect on the game that gently pushes it. It it never, football never does come down to one play. But sometimes that can be hard for, you know, 18, 19, 20, 22-year-old kids to understand. And even for you coaches at times, i got to imagine. Yeah, and I think it's just keep things uh, in perspective, you know, and um, and then control what you can you can control. You know, this this game was uh, was difficult. We had a, we had a, a small time to get ready for it, but it's not an excuse. It's just uh, what what could we have done in that in that amount of time to to prepare better for the game, and um, you know, it wasn't a lack of effort, and and maybe things didn't go our way as as much, but. Uh, you know, looking at, at the opportunity to play in, in, short, in a short week, um, it's not a lot that you can work on. And, and then also just making sure that we uh, execute at a better, le- at a higher level and on offense, defense, and special teams. And that sometimes execute, it's, it's like it covers everything, and that's what a coach is supposed to say. But it's little things like um, catching the ball, making that one block, moving your feet. And those are things that we have to, we just, we just can't make a blanket statement and say we just got to play better. That's not going to work. We have to give them reasons why uh, and reasons to play better, give them a map that they can follow, and then, and then they're, they're going to go out and, and focus on that, and then we'll see improvement. Coastal 22, BYU 17, our final. More with Kalani next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Locker Room Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Time for the 
the Mountain America Field Goal Recap. For each field goal BYU makes, Mountain America donates $250 to the American Red Cross. Cougars made one field goal tonight for a running total of 11 this year. The season total in donations is now $3,250. BYU head coach Kalani Sitake with us. Coach, you only had one offensive three and out tonight, and it came on a play that set you up third and two at midfield with around five minutes to go in the game. You lost three yards, you punted on fourth and five. Can you take us through the third and the fourth down thoughts in a really crucial series for you there at the end? Yeah, we're hoping to get get a first down on that third down, but, uh, you know, I end up losing some yards. And, uh, you know, had, had we even lost none or even one, I would have been okay with going for it. But fourth and five, the, the, the odds are you have to play kind of the odds and, and – being at midfield, I just felt like we could we had enough time, even with one timeout, to possibly get the ball back, and and um, that's why we punted it, you know, and and we did, but they were able to get a first down early, which took a lot of time off, and um, you know, looking at it, uh, if we could have been better with our timeouts, we had to take one at the end of a, of a play. It looked like we we're getting lined up on third and long, maybe just take the, the five yard penalty because I think it was third and twenty when we first took our first one. And the second one just had uh, too many guys on the field at one moment, and I didn't want to have get a penalty. So uh, those are things that that we can fix as coaches. And and from the start to the finish, Coastal's a team that's going to go under 10 seconds on every play clock. They, they they shorten the game deliberately from the get-go. Yeah, and that's what they do. I mean, that, that that's well, that's why a lot of their plays and their wins and their their games, if you notice, they're they're in the 20s and. Um, uh, you know, there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of high scoring from that, but um, you know, we still felt like we had opportunities to to, to make plays. We just uh, it's, it's going to be really difficult to win games with the type of score that the output that we had. Okay, you know, close. And, oh, sorry, Kalani. Oh, that's okay. No, okay. We'll have closing comments from the coach. We'll take one more break. Come back with Kalani with us at Coastal Carolina on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. <laughs> Postgame coverage of BYU football continues with the Cougar Postgame Coaches Show. Brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, guiding members forward for more than 80 years. Let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Cougar Postgame Coaches Show, Greg Rubel, Riley Nelson, head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Sitake. Kalani's Cougs fall to Coastal Carolina tonight by a score of 22-17. to 17. There are two 10-0 teams in the country, Notre Dame and now Coastal Carolina. Uh, Kalani, when you look back on the experience, it's certainly one that may never be equaled in terms of when you found out about it to how you had to cross the country to play it to all the things that went on once you got here. Uh, the outcome is clearly going to sting for a long time, but the experience in this most unusual year is one that uh, everyone's going to remember for a long time. Yeah, I, we're thankful to play the game, you know, and, and obviously it didn't go our way, but uh, thank for all the people that made it happen, and uh, there's a lot of that went into work to, to allow us to play this game on, on both sides. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our team and, and, and thankful for the opportunity, and uh, you know, we're going to build on this. And 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 it's not, uh, you know, it's 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 not the end of the world for us, but it, it feels like it, you know. And and uh, we've got to we've got to respond better and and get better as a team and and as coaches, and we will. And and I believe in in our players. I believe in our coaches and. And uh, we've got to respond and, and, and uh, grow from this. Coach, from what you've seen or heard of San Diego State over the course of the season, uh, any preview on challenges that they pose or as you get ready to face them next Saturday? Yeah, similar style. I mean, they're going to try to possess the ball as well and, and, and own possession and try to limit our opportunities. And I, I imagine they're going to keep the same uh, game plan. Uh, we, we had an early start on them because we had nothing else in, in lined up to, to – on our schedule so we had to work towards San Diego State and and possibly some others you know as we started working through everything but um you know now we can focus on them and get ready for next week and 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 uh you know they beat us last week so we've we've got some uh we've got to get our mindset right and be ready to play this game and and uh, send our seniors out the right way in Lavelle Stadium. Coach when we go back to the very very first offensive play of the game it looked like you were up on a touchdown on on snap number one, and you've done that before this year. How heartbreaking was it to to see it come back and put you back deep and and knock it off to the start that might have uh, changed the tone of this thing early? Yeah, that was tough. I mean, I didn't I didn't get to see the holding and all that, but it, it is uh, you, you just got to respond better and, and get back on it. You know that that that's a it was a long play and and um, looked good, but we had uh, you know we we made a mistake up front in protection, and uh, next time we'll we'll try to fix it. 
Yeah, it's a few things that uh, might not have happened normally through 9-0, and uh, kind of bit you to try and get to 10-0 and tonight, and that's, that's part of football, I guess. But this is not the end of the world nor the end of the season, as you've already talked about. There's another game in a week and, and something else you've got to get ready for, and you know that San Diego State, as well as they played you last year, will attempt to, to do the same again this year. So you're right back at it. Yeah, we're still going to try to get our 10th win, and, um, you know, we, we, we feel like we've um, earned a right to, to get a bowl game and, and – you know, maybe that will happen, but, but for us it's just a focus on San Diego State. We have opportunities to play as a team together, and, and uh, it's not the end for these guys. And so, you know, we came out of it pretty healthy and uh, looking forward to getting better and, and, and improving and getting the result we want next week. Was Clark Barrington the only guy to leave the game tonight? Yeah, and I think he's a little hobbled up, but, I'm, I mean, we'll have to see all the, all the details of it. But, um, you know, and I, I think Gunner took that one, but it might have been knocked the wind out of him and all that, but. Uh, I think they're going to be okay. I have to kind of talk to our trainers and see. But um, for the most part, I think we're, we came out of pretty healthy. And so uh, the end, end result tonight uh, put you back home at 9-1 uh, and one with San Diego State coming in next week. The environment here, last thing, Kalani, for you, they put 5,000 fans in the stands. There was some BYU blue to be seen, and it sounded good, and it was an energized atmosphere. It's, uh, it, it felt like college football again, which is hard to do sometimes this year. Yeah, and my only regret, uh, you know, is that we weren't able to sing the fight song to our fans. And um, I think with, with some of their fans rushing the field and the excitement and the stuff that happened at, earlier in halftime, you know, I think they, they asked us to leave the field. So otherwise we would have stayed out there and sang the fight song for our fans to show our appreciation. But I hope they know we're thankful that they were to be here and we love them and uh, love our fans all over the world and uh, look forward to, to, to getting better from this result. And we appreciate you too, Kalani. Uh, thanks for the time tonight. Safe travels for you and the team, and we'll uh, get ready to do it again next week. Thanks, guys. Be safe. Thank you. All right, that is Kalani Sitake in the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. More from Conway coming up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.